Howdy YouTube, um, Happy New Year. Um, it's been about a month since I posted my last video, but I thought that it would be fitting to post my new video. Um, it's sort of a retrospective look into 2011, which I have dubbed the year of my transition. Um, transition in terms of my um, transition into um, independence and gaining my own autonomy and everything and if you've followed my videos in the last six months you probably have gathered that even though it's been a very condensed version of what's been going on in my life in the last six months it gives a pretty good insights gives pretty good insights into what I've been dealing with but um, as I look back um, into it I really started realizing that it wasn't just um, a transition in terms of what's happened in the last six months um, ie my breakup and and everything. Actually, um, 2011 started with a transition. Um, 2011 started with my ex and I giving our um, our notice at our old apartment downtown, the one that, the apartment that we lived at for about two years. Um, finally, giving our notice there and moving into a nice, nice little apartment in the Roncesvalles village. So it started with a transition. But what's so different about um, that start of the year as opposed to the end of the year? was 2011 had actually started off very optimistically and um, um, I was sort of happy, I was actually very happy, even if the happiness was a facade, I still to this day feel that I was really happy and my ex was happy and we were happy in a relationship and things were going along really well, I was doing really well in school, which pretty much was my final year of university and um, I had a job that I was enjoying and just, you know, overall my life was really well. I was going really well and I really thought that the, the move into our new apartment was the perfect symbol of, of um, our transition or my transition. Of course, um, things change as they always do and they change rather quickly. Um, I started to feel pretty unhappy in my life uh, probably around the end of end of February, I started to feel pretty darn unhappy with the way things were going. Um, my ex was completely un uh, emotionally unavailable, um, didn't communicate well with me, and I did everything I could to try to get that out of him, and it just wasn't working, and I had become, I had become really unhappy. Um, and of course, I'm always, I'm, I'm constantly inside my own head, so it really wasn't working well for me, and of course was the reason why um, we're no longer together, why I'm here and he's there. That's actually the only reason why that happened, which isn't a fun thing to think about, but I digress. Um, so yeah, so 2011 was definitely the year of my transition, my transition into um, autonomy, into independence the first time in my entire life that I've been on my own. I mean, I have a roommate, but you know what I mean. Like, uh, I moved out of my parents' house and started living with my ex a couple of years ago. I mean, that's just how it happened. I never, you know, had to move on to my own. This is the first time I've done, I've been doing it. And I'm really happy with that, actually. Um, this transition, you know what I mean? It's, it, it's funny, I guess, or ironic. I don't know how you want to look at it, but it started off the trans, like I said, 2011 was the year of the transition. It started off really optimistically and happily, and and you know all the all that, and then of course it turned really sour and um, very stress-inducing and very anxiety. You know, it just be, I became really I came in, in a neurotic, anxious mess from July until just a few weeks ago even, maybe a month ago I'd say. It really wasn't until I finally started to take charge of my own life. Now, of course, my last video was um, me trying to interpret a lot of really stressful and uh, a lot of really stressful dreams I had been having. And I had finally come to the conclusion that um, those dreams were unconscious manifestations of what I've been dealing with um, in terms of stress and my anxieties and everything. Um, I haven't given an update on those dreams or what those dreams have meant to me until now, but um, actually the dreams actually stopped at one point because I actually had a dream, I still remember quite vividly, um, that involved me being in a tank of water. Um, it was a round tank 
Um, the walls weren't transparent. They were actually like, they were like a swimming pool, but they're really small and actually shallow. I'd say probably no more than 10 feet deep. And I'm stuck at the bottom of this tank and I realized I really need to break the surface, which really wasn't that high up. I need to break the surface in, other, in, a, in, in order to, to live. I needed to get up there. But every time I would get up there, I would stop myself because I was really afraid. I was really afraid. And what was I afraid of? I was actually afraid that there were sharks up there, even though I was in the water and that was the air. That's how my mind worked at the time. I was really afraid of the sharks that were I thought were up there. So I kept myself at the bottom of the pool. Now I could breathe, but I mean, dreams don't have to make a whole lot of sense, right? But I knew I needed to break the surface in order, in order to live. That was actually at the point when actually two sharks finally had dropped into the tank of water. Now the one shark I paid absolutely no attention to, I don't have any recollection of the one, but the one shark, as soon as he dropped into the water, I paid, I, I, as soon as I saw him, I only focused on him. He swam and he came up at me. He wasn't a big shark, but I mean, it, shark doesn't need to be big to be scary if he's like, you know, right at your face. And without thinking, I punched it. I punched it right in the face. And the shark reeled and it spun out and went down and swam up to the point where it came from. And then it went underneath, it tried to get underneath me. And I was pushed up against the wall. And as he was coming up with his teeth, like just, you know, he's showing his teeth and showing his aggression and showing his rage and, and, and barreling for me, I boffed it in the face once more. And that's actually probably around the time that I woke up. And when I woke up, woken up from that dream, I was a wreck. I was sweating and, you know, um, it's very cliche, but you know, like I was shaking and sweating and I was sort of cold and I was like, what the hell? Like, why was I being attacked by sharks? And I wasn't really thinking rationally. And I mean, you don't have to be a psychology major to unpack that dream. That dream is sort of, I mean, it makes sense. You know, I mean, obviously that shark was, um, uh, was a visual representation of my anxieties and my fears and me not being able to break the surface because of these sharks meant, you know, that I wasn't, I needed to take charge of my life in order to move on. That's what it meant. And by me finally just unconsciously taking charge, I needed to give that shark two very, very hard wax to the face. Um, so, I mean, that dream totally makes sense. And since that dream, um, my life has actually been going the way I would like it to go, which is kind of nice because I feel like my, my life has been sort of not in my control for a little while now. And um, so it feels really nice to finally be in control of my own, or to take control. Not that the control was never accessible to me. Now I'm finally taking control. And I, I think I've ended my year of the transition. I mean, I'm gonna continue doing this transition. But 2011 was sort of my year of the transition, like I said, by finally taking charge. By taking charge, um, you know, I got rid of Three people in my life, three people that were causing me the most amount of stress. Um, one of them was my ex and the other two were friends of mine that I really needed to get rid of because it just wasn't conducive to healthy living really at all. And since I'd done that, I've been a lot more lonely, but I've been a lot happier actually. I've been a lot happier since my ex has been in a completely other picture because I had seen a, a video and blog posts in the past. When my ex and I broke up, we decided to continue being friends, which worked for a little while, and then it didn't work. And then it really didn't work. So getting rid of him was something I needed to do from the get-go, but we all learned from our mistakes, I feel. And my two friends, it's kind of the same way, to be perfectly honest with you. The only difference was I wasn't intimate with them, really. Um, so dropping those three people from my life was what I really needed in order to in order to move on and take charge of my own life. And I've been really happy, been really happy. And this new year, so the cusp of 2011 to 2012, instead of going out and partying and spending an asinine amount of money on getting drunk and partying, I decided to finally paint my office. So my office is no longer that really stressful and it's, you know, ugly pink color. It's actually now, I can't really see it because this room is really awkward. So if you want to see it, come and visit. But it's a really nice, earth, really nice earthy green color. Um, the atmosphere is really nice. I really like it. I actually really like being in my office and working because I have a lot of work to do. So it's really nice to 
be in a room that feels inviting and warm and and everything. So I'm really liking it. And so I and I can't honestly I can't think of a better symbol for a fresh start for the new year than painting. You know what I mean? And sort of creating an atmosphere and an ambiance that is is conducive to me being productive and me being less stressful and less anxious because that pink was really making me quite anxious. It's really funny what color can do to you. Um, maybe it's not funny, I don't know. So I'm really looking forward to tracking the trajectory of 2012 and keeping people informed because people seem to be interested. Like every video that I post, I get actually emails from people to ha that have questions or comments or concerns, etc., etc. So I want to kind of keep that going. Um, so yeah, I'm always available by email or through my YouTube channel, my Facebook page, or my blog. Um, be, I'm always available for comments and questions and etc. And uh, I really hope everyone had a really great new year. And let's make 2012 a really happy, positive, optimistic year, unlike my 2011. Peace.